Welcome to Full Frontal. I'm Samantha Bee. Tonight, I'm partnering with other late night hosts to bring you stories about climate change because climate change is slowly making the planet uninhabitable. It's the number one issue we face. But there's another big climate change issue that doesn't get as much attention as wildfires or hurricanes. You might say it's the number two issue. This is not sexy. It's not something that most people talk about. Most people don't want to think about sewage. Yes, I am the most people she's talking about. I really don't want to do this segment. My official stance on all bathroom talk is feminists don't poop. I hate talking about this so much, I actually bit the writer who pitched this idea. But it turns out he was right. May God rest his soul. In many parts of the country, our water sanitation infrastructure is falling apart. Why? Let's grab our plungers and find out. Part of the problem with our water infrastructure is its age. Many of the sewer systems we know and love not to think about are more than a century old, and some sewer lines even date back to the Civil War. They were built by Abraham Lincoln after a little girl wrote a letter telling him he'd look better if he weren't holding it in all the time. Unlike most modern sewer systems, these older ones don't keep stormwater runoff separate from the wastewater that comes from your bathroom. That brings us to a little problem called CSO. No, I'm not referring to the hit CBS drama Crime Scene Orangutan, but this CSO is something almost as disturbing. Combined sewer overflows. In nearly 800 cities across the U.S., raw sewage overflows into the water by design in a downpour. Those cities have what are known as combined sewer systems, where the stuff that goes down our drains at home mixes with the stuff that washes off our streets. When it rains, instead of backing up into our homes, those systems can release a mix of sewage and polluted stormwater. Good news, kids. This year, the water park is coming to us. Aging pipes and inadequate capacity result in the discharge of an estimated 900 billion gallons of untreated sewage into U.S. waterways each year. And then, of course, there's the biggest cause of every problem, human stupidity. We're told not to flush wipes, dental floss, and other plastics down the drain, but New Yorkers doing it anyway. Last month, this is what workers had to remove from pipes in Jamaica, Queens. It's called a fat burb, a congealed mass of grease and personal hygiene products. Last year, almost 90% of the city's sewer backups were caused by grease and wipes. If it gets too big, it can mean raw sewage backs up into basements or gets released into rivers or lakes. It's mostly plastic and wipes. We found a bunch of tampon applicators. And that is why every sewage worker should be paid $3 billion a year. We have to stop flushing our non like paper towels, tissues, condoms, and especially wipes, which you should never flush, regardless of their claims to be flushable. Throw your used wipes in the trash. Or if you're the sentimental type, keep them in commemorative scrapbooks. Just keep them out of the damn turlet, you filthy animals. Of course, even if we stopped clogging our system with rat kings of human grossness, our sewage infrastructure would still be in trouble because it wasn't designed for our changing climate. As the planet warms up, heavy storms are producing vastly more rainfall in short periods of time. That's led to catastrophic flooding and sewage overflows around the country. And not just in the liberal urban hellholes you'd expect, but also in the red states that God doesn't hate. Some places already experience overflows with less than a quarter inch of rain. So it's not surprising that in many areas, our infrastructure was no match for this year's onslaught of storms. The problem isn't just the water itself, it's also what's in the water. Waste overflows are one of the leading sources of harmful bacteria in our water. And as sewage overflows, water could become full of harmful materials like untreated human and industrial waste, toxic materials, and debris. Basically, nature's grossest traffic jam. And thanks to our rapidly heating planet, this wastewater is extra bacterial since biological reactions occur faster in higher temperatures. It's the reason you don't eat potato salad that's been left out in the sun for six hours, no matter how good it tastes. As with virtually every other problem in this country, racism plays an unfortunate role in our sanitary system dysfunction. 
The authorities in Alabama brought sewage systems to affluent, primarily white neighborhoods decades ago. But roughly half of the homes in this mostly African-American county either don't have any septic system at all or their systems are failing. The Halcombs live just yards away from their town's wastewater lagoon. The irony is their entire African-American neighborhood isn't connected to the sewer system the lagoon serves. When it rains, the rest of the town's waste backs up into the Halcombs' yard. That is a disgusting situation that should be resolved, like all neighbor disputes, by beating up Rand Paul. Lowndes County isn't an isolated example. Water horror stories like these can be found in many predominantly black communities, as opposed to predominantly white communities, where the worst water horror story is when the waiter says, we're out of sparkling. So can things get even worse? Sure they can, because it turns out that our efforts to clean our water actually contribute to the climate change that's threatening us. Wastewater treatment plants may release more greenhouse gas than we thought because of fossil fuels and detergent-laden water from things like showers. And you know what that means? We owe these goddamn heroes an apology. Fight the shower, you glorious, nasty bitches. No one wants to think about sewage, but we all need to do our part to support the water infrastructure that supports us because waste disposal is vital to society and sanitation is a human right. Unless you're at an outdoor music festival, in which case it's a distant memory. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.